Goeiemorgen, Moraleta Kerk, wat een wonderlijke voorrecht om samen met jou te keir in jouw zitkamer. Welkom bij ons online dienst, ons het alle lekker naweek met ons paas eten wat ons gehad, ons paas nachtmaal en ons zien uit naar ons opstanding dienst hier die komende zondag. Volgend bij ons online dienst gaan ons vir jou weer speel, what a beautiful name. Toe Maria vir Engel vraag, wat moet ek om noem? Toe sê die Engel, Emmanuel. Wanneer ons praat oor Jesus Christus en sy naam en wat het vir ons beteken, dan, dan hou dit waarde in ons hart. En ek wil jou vraag vir oogend, wanneer jy hierna kyk, mag die Heilige Geest jou herinner aan hierdie mooie naam, hierdie naam wat gezag dra, hierdie naam wat vrijheid en verlossing verteenwoordig. Geniet het. Next guys. You can untie this man. He's no threat to us. He should be in prison and in stocks if you ask me. What charge is brought against him? There is no formal charge as yet. He's under investigation for sweeping up the crowd and stirring unrest and dissent. I'm sure we will find something against him. Ah, yes, I've heard of this man. By the looks of it, you are a long way from home. I consider Antioch to be my home, Your Excellency. Well, I guess you've been here long enough in Antioch. This man is leading an ever-growing sect known as The Way. Their continuous and rapid growth give reason for concern. Therefore, this investigation, Councillor... They're everywhere! The whole empire is infected by their doctrine. There's hardly a city or town where they don't gather in secret, no doubt scheming and plotting. Really, councillors, do we fear a political uprising? I fear worse. I want to know how a man like this can gather thousands of followers in our city. What are they called again? The Way. Here in Antioch, they are called Christians. Christians? Interesting. Followers of the Anointed One. And who is this Anointed One? A certain Jewish rabbi, Jesus of Nazareth. And where is this rabbi now? Executed. Executed? Crucified in Jerusalem by Pontius Pilate, almost 40 years ago. Are you telling me they're following a dead man? He is not dead, Your Excellency. Just as I thought things couldn't be more intriguing. Simon, am I right? I am Simon, originally from Cyrene, a disciple of Jesus, and by the grace of God, an elder in the church at Antioch. But this Jesus is dead! I beg to differ, Your Excellency. How can you be so certain? Because I believe that he's here with us right now. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, 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 oh. 
know him? I mean, before he was crucified. How could he? He's a black man from Cyrene and Jesus was a Jew. You know how racist the Jews are. Well, you're right. I mean, how could someone like me know a Jewish rabbi? So then, how did you meet him? Well, Your Excellency, I was converted to Judaism by Jews who fled Ptolemy's return and settled in Cyrene. The Cyrenian Jews had a synagogue in Jerusalem where we would go for our annual festivals. It was on one of those pilgrimages that I met him. So you did meet him? It took me more than two years where I just heard of this wonder-working rabbi. Great crowds just gathered around him, but I couldn't get to him. I'd always be pushed out to the back. But listening from the fringes, my heart was stirred with faith. And I just started to believe that this man was the promised one, the Messiah. I can see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I can see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop Messiah? That's quite a claim you are making, Simon. If that was true, why are the Jews still under Roman rule? Or is that the plot? A Jewish Messiah come to deliver his people from the empire, died as a martyr, and now you are conjuring up fables to stir up a revolution. Counselor, we will get to those allegations. I first want to hear, Simon, how did you get to know of him? Like I said, Your Excellency, I was desperate to get close to the man, but because of my race, I could not. But that all changed on... Honorable Counselor, I must protest. The witness has the right to speak. And I also would like to hear his story. Your Excellency, in the end, I came to be closer to him than anyone ever could. On the day of his execution, I was made to carry his cross. Oh, you are good. No wonder you could persuade uninformed crowds. You can't fool me with, with your melodramatic propaganda. I've been to the theater. This is all lies and fables. With your permission, Your Excellency, I would like to submit to you a letter from Mary, his mother. She was there. Since when will any reputable counsel even entertain evidence from a woman? He has a human mother just like Hercules. We have to read it. Greetings, beloved brother Simon. When, when I heard, I heard that you, heard that to you are called to answer before the authorities of the great city of Antioch for the faithful work you have done in the service of our Lord Jesus Christ, I took it upon myself 
to have this letter of encouragement written to you. I pray that it would be of some comfort in this time of affliction. I will never forget our first encounter on that dark and gruesome day when the blood of my the blood of my son covered your shoulders as you were compelled to carry his cross up Calvary. My heart was torn like his feet. His flesh that must have clung to that cursed beam you bore on his behalf. How my soul drowned in anguish on that day, a day so to live. My beloved brother, who would have known that that pain would make way for such exuberant joy? Who could have guessed that that dark and grisly day would be the crowning glory of His Majesty? The love of our Father displayed without restraint. Now, let's hold on to the assurance we have in Christ. Knowing, knowing that there is no end to His reign. As He has always been. In the words of our beloved brother John. He was the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. His hidden
So even his mother believes that he has risen from his grave. Not just that, she calls him her king. There is only one king. There is only one kingdom. Caesar and the Roman Empire. We will come to that. But this man amazes me. After all the racial prejudice, he suffered from the Jews. He now sides with them. So, if this is a revolution like my fellow councillor suggested, it's not a great political construct. I can get his mother's claim to his resurrection. If anyone, she should profit from such a phenomenon. But why would he make claims of a resurrection? I have to give it to them, Simon. The Jews are known for their one-upmanship rivalries when it comes to matters spiritual. You yourself said they pushed you out, so why would they allow you back in? Unless he's paying someone off, you know? The love of money can trump the hate of race. Yes, that is puzzling. You could not get close, and now you're leading the church in Antioch. Well, Your Excellency, I came to Antioch with my brothers from Cyprus to work with Barnabas, who I would regard as our patriarchate. But even he would tell you that Jesus was our leader. At first, our work was among the Jews. But it is safe to say that the other races outnumber the Jews by far. Why would the Jews all of a sudden now accept you? Your Excellency, please allow me to present to you another letter from a Jew, a man. He was one of the Jews who at first tried to keep us out. From Peter, Apostle of Jesus Christ, to Simon, elected by a Jew, calling him elected. To Simon, Simon elected, elected by, the grace of by the grace of our Father, to be our co-worker in the kingdom of Antioch. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be our God and Father, who has called us to be brothers in the faith. We are all born from the same indestructible seed and share an imperishable inheritance kept for us in heaven. Brother, how shamefully wrong was my previous convictions, thinking that we Jews had the inside lane to God's salvation plan? How wrong was I? Ever since my vision of the sheet filled with unclean animals on the rooftop, I thank God for increasingly opening my heart to embrace all who are called by the name of Jesus Christ, regardless of race. Now I know that at our Father's table, we all start on the outside. We all are wrong. Only He is right. But now, because of Christ, our glorious Savior, and on account of His finished work on the cross, we are all called and invited to be insiders. Not just insiders, sons and daughters, seated at the table of our Heavenly Father. And 
just when all hope seems lost. Love opened the door for us. He said, Come to the table. Come join the sinners who've been redeemed. Take your place beside. So very touching. This sounds to me like empty promises designed to make outcasts and misfits feel they belong somewhere. That they have some ridiculous reason to hope. <laughs> With some work, you could come and preach at some of our gatherings, Your Excellency. But seriously, Simon, are you accepted by the Jews? Not by all, Your Excellency. But the way is not about being accepted by people. It is about the revelation of the overwhelming acceptance of our Heavenly Father. This table the letter is referring to, it belongs to the same God worshipped by the Jews? Well, the timing of the crucifixion of Jesus is significant. If I remember correctly, it was celebrated during the Passover. Yes, Your Excellency. That is why I found myself in Jerusalem. We were there to celebrate the Passover. We would set a table to remember how God delivered his people from slavery. A blood of a lamb was cast on a doorpost so that the angel of death would not claim the life of the firstborn in that house. I know that tradition. It has been kept by the Jews to this day. Your Excellency, 
the Passover was not just a remembrance of the past, but also of the promised Lamb of God that was to come. He who was to come to save those who believe from the slavery of sin. Do you believe, Simon? Oh yes, Your Excellency. Unbeknownst to me, not far from where my sons and I were sitting at the Passover table, Jesus was sitting with his disciples, revealing the mystery of time, that he was to be the final Passover lamb.
Simon, what if all this was just be a coincidence? Hmm. The one coincidence that is clear to me is that this rabbi was found guilty just like this man for leading an insurgency. If my memory serves me right, Pilate could not find any wrong in Jesus. Pilate even washed his own hands in public. Yes, yes, Your Excellency. Pilate just gave in under the pressure of the Jewish religious leaders. And they charged against him? That he called himself the king of the Jews. That is what the records will state. He was charged with blasphemy for claiming to be the son of God, calling God his father. And was he? Simon, do you believe that Jesus is God? Utter nonsense. A rebellious self-promoter. The Lamb of God was to be without blemish. Jesus was executed for many reasons. But, but mostly, mostly because of love. Love? Simon, you will have to explain. Your Excellency, please allow me to submit another letter from another Mary. She was there. She followed Jesus. Mary Magdalene, follower of Jesus, our beloved Lord and Another Savior. Another woman. Follower Another of, of Jesus, Jesus, our beloved Lord and our Savior, Lord to our faithful Savior, brother Simon. To our faithful brother Simon, who bore the cross of our Lord on that dreadful day and never ceased in doing so. Grace and mercy to you. It is with great joy that I'm sending this letter to you, reminding you of the great works we have witnessed together. As you know, by God's abundant grace, I was the first to see our Lord on His day of resurrection. Oh, the favor that befell me to bear such a witness not only changed my life, it changed everything. Dear brother, we must steadfastly continue in proclaiming the spectacular act of love of the Father. There are many who want to reduce the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord to mere inscriptions archived in history. But we know by experience the significance of this glorious act of love. On that day, the creator of heaven and earth did what no man could do. He paid our ransom in full. We were saved from eternal condemnation to be his beloved in glory. The weight of the promise held in your heart. My sinful condition kept us apart. In the garden of Gethsemane,
It is finished, death undone. Now forever praise the sun. She claims not only just to have seen Jesus after his so-called resurrection, but then continues to state that he has conquered the grave for all. I don't know what to make of these claims. It's a woman's testimony. It has no standing. With the testimony of a centurion in charge of the execution, carry swear with you, Your Excellency? Impossible! Bring it to me. I can't believe it. Known to you as Longinus, I am a brother, brother in Christ. Christ. In hiding. Lying. To my brother, Simon. You know that I served as a centurion in the Roman military stationed in Jerusalem under Pontius Pilate. It was my duty to execute Jesus of Nazareth, who was found guilty of claiming to be the King of the Jews. I witnessed everything first hand. It was I who arrested him in the garden, who commanded his flogging under our mocking and jeering. And then when he was so weakened by the wounds I inflicted upon him that he no longer could bear the burden of his cross, I compelled you, Simon, to carry it for him. Your race made you an, an easy choice for this most degrading of tasks. It is then both the relief and the delight for me to learn that what I had meant for dishonor, God meant for your salvation. <laughs> it's not surprising considering that in the end, none of our actions that day had the results we intended. <laughs> well, when when Jesus took his final breath, the earth shook, darkness in enveloped the midday sun, and we were terrified. This, this was not just another crucifixion. This man did not respond like the innumerable criminals who suffered this fate before him. He was, he was silent like a, like, a, like a lamb led to the slaughter, totally at peace meeting our hateful, scornful gnarls and glares with loving compassion. <laughs> who, who is this man? Surely, surely he is the Son of God. <sighs> well, after uh, I refused bribes to conceal his resurrection, I had to flee. But I fled as a free man. His last breath was my first. Man of song Slam of God by his own betrayed the son of man and wrath of God has been on Jesus' name.
by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me, whom the Son sets free. on a resurrection. Surely it makes no difference. The teachings of Jesus known to me ought to be enough. Centurion or not, this is preposterous. <laughs> Your Excellence, why is the way growing in strength and numbers like it does? Against all odds, against persecution, from the empire and the Jews alike, from economic exclusion to chains. Not even death can stop the good news of Jesus the Messiah from changing people's lives. Why? That is why we are investigating you. We don't know. It is because of the resurrection, Your Excellence. Without the resurrection, Jesus is just another good teacher pointing us to truth, sharing some wisdom, a good assistant on our self-improvement projects. But the resurrection, the resurrection proves that Jesus is the truth, that he is wisdom and the only way to life is to die to self and to be made alive in him, your excellence. If I may, I have one last letter to present to you from my beloved brother and co-worker in Christ, Paul, chosen by God, a Roman citizen. Paul makes it clear that the resurrection is the ultimate proof that Jesus was the final lamb to be slain for our sins. The wrath of our righteous father has been satisfied once and for all. From Paul, an, an apostle, apostle of, Christ of Jesus, Jesus Christ, to God's faithful servant in Antioch, Simon, grace and peace to you from God our Father. It has been many years since you and our brother Lucius, together with the elders of the church in Antioch, laid your hands on Barnabas and I to send us off on our first mission trip to preach the glorious news of the gospel to the Gentiles. How faithful God has been in confirming his word through wonders of which the many who have come to faith in Christ is not the least. Our prayers are not just for you and the faithful in Antioch, but we also pray for your sons. We have received encouraging reports from your sons of Rufus's labor in Rome, as well as the selfless service of Alexander to the church in Jerusalem. You know, brother, that in the end, it is not we who work, but Christ, as he paid it all 
and in our weakness, His strength is revealed. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray, finding me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all.
your sons are also part of this plot. With respect, Your Excellence, God's grace reached my entire household. And like me, they are devoting their lives to proclaiming the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. Yes, I am grateful. And this Paul you have sent out is causing havoc wherever he goes. The entire empire is ablaze because of this troublemaker. Dear Counselor, then it would be of some comfort to you to know that Paul is currently awaiting trial in Rome. And by his own insistence, he wants to be heard by Caesar himself. <laughs> Your Excellence, I didn't send Paul. He was called by Christ. And if by the will of God he is to address Caesar, then maybe there's still hope for Caesar. Councillors, I think we have concluded this hearing. I fear if I listened to this man any longer, I would find myself converted to the faith. Here we have Simon, man of Cyrene, who was an outsider and then became a leader of a gathering of a sect following a dead man that they claim rose from the dead. It is clear that his influence reaches beyond our city walls through mm -hmm. his sons and Paul, mm -hmm. but he sounds harmless to me. Your thoughts? I have to agree. I don't think there's any threat here. I must admit, I misjudged you, Simon. Good. Then we can conclude this sitting. But there is still one issue. There is only one King Caesar. There is no other. Yet in almost every letter you presented, there was a reference to Jesus as King and his kingdom. Oh yes, there is that. You might have underestimated me, Simon. Your persuasion only work on weak minds. But he never confessed Jesus as king or another kingdom by his own mouth. Now did he? No, technically he didn't. Good. Then we are done. No, we're not. Simon, is there any other king but Caesar? Simon, choose your words very carefully. There is a lot at stake. What is your testimony? In the darkness we were weighed without hope and from heaven you came around There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the
for good for the lamb that conquered death and the dead rose from the tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all those who would come to the father are restored and the church and the Christ was born and the spirit lit the flame and this gospel truth of all 